Hello, my name is Brandon Woodman. Today I'll be doing a presentation um, on the whole food market. This is a case study for a class. Um, I'm a senior at NMSU. I'm in my second to last semester, graduating with a marketing degree. And I am, I've already owned my own business for multiple years. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit older. I'm coming back to school after 14 years. And I am, uh, I own my own business for 10 years, running a snack food business. I also did multiple other things. I personally train people right now. Um, I also meal prep food for what I would call uh, rich people on the weekends. I cook all their food for the week. And I also take eats and credit hours, so just trying to get something going. Today we're going to discuss a little bit about the whole food market and uh, Larry Austin, who is an entrepreneur at his finest. And some of the things that he's done, I think he's an inspiration to me and a lot of other people who have owned and want to own businesses. Um, one of the things we're talking about today are the uh, Austin's Four Considerations, the transforming of the brand image that uh, Austin has, has done, addressing the food access and poverty, um, which I think is pretty amazing considering the fact that he wanted to put the whole food markets into lower income neighborhoods where... You know, you have two different people thinking two different things. So you got one side saying, well, they're going to put this in. This is going to raise property values for everybody around us and make it really hard for the people to live there. Then you have other people saying it's going to actually bring more commercial industry close to it, which is kind of what it did. Same thing similar with Walmart. When they buy up all the property um, around their areas and then lease it out, that basically the property around every Walmart becomes gold for any business that's there. Um, we're also going to talk about respecting the business's bottom line, pushing out local business and the residents, which is kind of what we talked about briefly. Um, uh, we're also going to talk about Austin's recent strategy to consider the, the low income urban communities as part of its store development. Store expansion strategy is Austin's key growth, uh, excuse me, um, the store expansion strategy is Austin's key strategy for growth. Um, I'll reference Walmart often, and that's because the company that I work for, I'm typically in Walmarts, and I've been dealing with Walmart for about 20 years, so I see a lot of similarities in the way that the businesses are run. Um, <clears throat> another thing I want to discuss today is the impact of the problem. The impact of the entrance of the low-income urban communities was amazing. Um, Not only does it bring more business to the, the area, but it also gives jobs for the people that live in those communities. Uh, Austin, and when I say Austin, I'm speaking of Larry Austin, the owner of the uh, Whole Foods industry. Austin believed there was enough room for everybody, which I think is amazing because a lot of times nowadays, it's all about just the profit, which I know is always going to be the bottom line for any business. But there's also the side of it that he saw, which is the low income areas being able to expand and have businesses want to actually be there. Um, Austin believed there was enough room for everyone. Uh, having the high-end grocery in the low-end communities brought local economic development and greater accessibility to food for everyone. Anytime you have a grocery store come up in an area where there typically isn't one or it's just a convenience store that most people are getting their stuff from, that automatically brings uh, vendors and other people from outside sources bringing food in which allows other little areas to be able to pick up on some of those vendors that wouldn't have normally come into that um, economically underdeveloped area, as some would call it, or, you know, it's what we would call it when we were kids the ghetto. Um, if I was Larry Austin, I would continue to grow in the low-income communities and support them. Um, Austin was able to transform the brand image from something of very simplistic, high-end type community and brought that to basically everyone, showing them that, you know, not just the high-end consumer is going to consume our products, it's going to be everyone. And that's what he's been aiming for. Now, has that actually happened? Can the low-end consumer actually afford to consume and buy groceries from Whole Food Markets? That I don't know. I know speaking for myself, I'm not what you would call a high-end customer. I'd be more of a median salary type person, and I know I typically have to shop at places like Walmart and Albertsons for things that are on sale. Um, uh, talking about the 
Cosmic Keys, um, People, Profit, and Planet. Basically what that gets boils down to is the social, environmental, and economic concerns that are important to the bottom line of any company. Um, I can't name the company I work for, but I work for one of the largest food companies in the world. And I know at least once a month we're constantly doing things on economic sustainability. Um, we're always doing training on um, social concerns and how to act. Training on, of course, stuff like um, internet, Facebooks, um, not only that, but we're encouraged every single year to donate money to United Way. We do we get time off of work to donate our time to different charities. I don't donate my time to Roadrunner Food Bank. Um, and for three years, I used to help run the food bank and hatch. Um, the bottom line is very important to the longevity of the company. If if only two of the three aspects are being taken care of, the company will not succeed. So if the company is only focusing on social and environmental concerns and not economic, they're not going to make it in the long run because when a company is making profits and making money and they give back, that's when I've found that the company does the best. I own my own business for nine years and I found for myself when I donated back to the community, my business got better. When I donated products to the local schools to sell for the local fundraisers, that brought more people into my business and saw that, this, that I and my family and the people that worked for me were good people that wanted to continue to do business with us. And that's a small company. This is no whole foods market. Um, in the world we live in today, companies must find ways to give back. Um, <clears throat> kind of what we talked about today is uh, what Larry Austin has done to create a lasting grocery business that has increased the value of everything around it, including homes and land. Um, this is a big deal. I know that if I lived near a where a Whole Foods market was, I would actually be excited Unless I lived in Texas, because I know my property taxes were going to go up, but my property value is also going to go up, which is great. Um, that increases what my my home and my land is worth when I go to sell it. Um, some critics um, will claim that by having the Whole Foods Market in these once low-income urban areas promotes uh, promotes local economic development. That's the side that I'm more on, having been a business owner and seeing what some of the large companies actually do care about. Of course, it's always going to be bottom line profits, but when the profits are there and they're giving back, there's a lot that they can do with those profits. Um, uh, a lot of people think that this is only going to be benefit developers, which is for, you know the local economic development. That is also true, but the bottom line is people have to work at these, at these stores, um, and the people that live in the vicinity are going to be some of the people that have a better shot of getting a job there also. Um, other critics claim that it drives out local citizens, and I can also see that too being if you are low income and you're having a hard time and you're barely able to make it, and then they build the Whole Foods Market, and now your, your, your home value goes up and they say maybe you're renting, and now you owe, you pay $800 a month, and now you've got to pay $1,500 a month. I do see that side of it, but from a business standpoint, um, uh, Larry Austin is an entrepreneur in the grocery industry. I've been working in the grocery industry now for 20 plus years, and I've been with a company I've been with for seven years now. Um, what he's done with the Whole Foods Market, specifically in places like Austin, is absolutely incredible. When I go to the Whole Foods Market in Austin, I see people from all walks of life. I see what you would call the homeless guy on the street to the, to the guy with the Rolex and the Porsche parked out front, all shopping at the same place, buying some of the same similar things. This to me is fascinating. Um, the grocery store itself is fascinating to me. I deal with HEBs, Albertsons, Walmarts, Sam's Club, Costco's, Lowe's, the list of Randall's, the list goes on and on. Um, the one thing I do find though is that these, some of these companies find these specific niches like HEB in Texas with the wine tasting in the back. Whole Foods is taking that to a whole nother level. Everything that they do is quite amazing and they have pretty good prices. Um, I'm a big fan of Trader Joe's personally, smaller end, a little bit small, lower prices, but the Whole Foods is like the super center of the, uh, the organic industry. Um, thank you all for your time for listening to me. Again, my name is Brandon Whitman. I'm a senior at NMSU. Um, thank you for your time, and you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.